stands in the name of Chris Ochenvall. Mr Speaker, my question is to the Minister of Finance and reads, what steps has the government taken to make better use of its balance sheet to boost growth and jobs? The Honourable Bill English. And Mr Speaker, uh, the government has a very substantial balance sheet with total assets currently at a value of around $220, million, $220 billion. In the last few years, the government has undertaken a range of carefully selected capital investments, including an infrastructure program with significant investment in roads uh, and in Kiwi Rail, as well as investment in schools, hospitals uh, and commercial assets. Uh, This shows that uh, the first investment statement shows that these substantial investments will add up over the next five years to increasing state assets by $34 billion, uh, much of it through expenditure on uh, property, plant and equipment, which will generate jobs and long-term boost in productivity for the economy. Chris Ochenvall. Supplementary to the Minister, what independent assessments has he seen of the benefits of the Crown using its capital better? The Honourable Bill English. Mr Speaker, when the government is making uh, very substantial new investments, it needs uh, to be careful how it finances those investments. Uh, Last week I saw analysis of the mixed ownership proposals uh, the government's put forward, uh, analysis by the New Zealand Institute of Economic Research. They concluded the proposal makes sense and that a partial sale would allow the government to share the financing of major future investments with other investors and that the proposal will reduce government's future borrowing needs. Chris Ochenvall. Thank you, Mr Speaker. To the Minister, did the NZIER analysis also cover what impact mixed ownership would have on government finances? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Yes, Mr Speaker, it did. It noted that the return on equity that the taxpayers have invested in these assets is less than the interest costs of holding the assets. NZIER calculated that the annual gain to the government from selling 49% of these companies uh, could be close to $250 million per year. This seems reasonable, though the government's own projections are more conservative. Chris Ochenvold. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Finally, to the Minister, has he seen other examples of New Zealand businesses redeploying their capital for better use? The Honourable Bill English. Uh, Mr Speaker, uh, yes, I have. I've noted that Tower's investment chief, Sam Stubbs, has said that the Tower is likely to sell assets they own overseas in order to be able to buy these assets in New Zealand. And that would um, follow the pattern of shareholders of uh, the Port of Tauranga, where New Zealanders are buying out foreign ownership of shares listed uh, on Tauranga, uh, Port of Tauranga shares listed on the stock exchange. I've also seen reports that Fairfax intend to float part of Trade Me on the New Zealand share market, a model similar to that that the government is proposing and similar to that of Air New Zealand, which was set up as a mixed ownership company by the previous Labor government. The Honourable John Biscowan. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister. How would growth and jobs have been affected if the government had implemented a tax-free threshold of $5,000, taken GST off fresh fruit and vegetables, and restored the research and development tax credits as proposed by Labor? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, thankfully we didn't get to find out uh, because the Labor government was thrown out and didn't have the opportunity to put that package together. Uh, But it almost certainly would have been as bad for jobs and for confidence as the policies of that party when they were in government. Supplementary. The Honourable John Biscowan. Thank you, Mr Speaker. Supplementary to the Minister. How would growth and jobs have been affected if government had reduced spending to 29% of GDP and reduced the top company and company and income tax rate to 21% as proposed by Act last month? The Honourable Bill English. Well, Mr Speaker, it's, it's, a, it's a bit hard to tell. 
uh, because those measures uh, could those measures uh, may may have ended up with the government uh, sl- the government slashing the support that many New Zealanders have relied on uh, through the tougher times of a recession. Um, I'm sure the members' party believes it would have been better for jo- growth and jobs. Uh, we believe we struck about the right balance between building confidence and the opportunity for more jobs and higher incomes in the future, uh, while protecting New Zealanders through the tough times of a recession. Question number two, the Honourable Annette King. 